Last year, I did a video covering the potential for Nintendo to focus on virtual reality and augmented reality features as a core concept for its new console. I looked at their history with the tech, addressed the major issues that Nintendo themselves identified, the ability to play long sessions, affordability, and putting parents at ease, plus the need to find sufficient games. Now, the video still holds up, but the sound and video quality were a bit of a mess, so I wanted to re-release it. At the end, though, I've added a few additional points. So if you already saw the original, check the timestamps at the bottom to skip to my new comments at the end. It's coming. Virtual reality and augmented reality have been on Nintendo's radar for years. From the Virtual Boy to Pokemon Go, from Nintendo Labo to the new Mario Kart AR ride at Nintendo World, this is squarely on Nintendo's radar. Shigeru Miyamoto himself admitted that the problems with VR were solved or starting to be solved back in 2016, while simultaneously outlining four concerns that hold Nintendo back from embracing it. Let's see how Nintendo has painstakingly built ways to address each of those concerns in turn, chalking the queue for an extended reality revolution. Welcome to Nintendo Forecast, the channel for researched, measurable, accountable forecasts of the world's least predictable video game company. Nintendo is far from a newcomer to the virtual reality space. When discussing the history of the Virtual Boy with Satoru Iwata, Miyamoto admitted, at the time I was interested in virtual reality and was one of the staff that went on and on about how we should do something with 3D goggles. I didn't exactly twist Gunpoi Yokoi's arm, but I would talk with Yokoi-san about how 3D goggles would be interesting. He's referring, of course, to Virtual Boy creator Gunpei Yokoi, also more famously, creator of the Game Boy. Of course, since then we've seen lots of experiments, most notably Pokemon Go. For the purposes of this discussion, I'm lumping augmented and virtual reality in together, extended reality as they call it, because for reasons I'll explain, I do think both functionalities are going to be equally crucial for Nintendo. In June of 2016, Miyamoto laid his stall out even more explicitly. We're researching VR, he said, so we have the core technology. Long play sessions are an issue. We want to release something that can be played for long periods, carries value, and is affordable. We want parents to feel at ease. Long play sessions, value, affordability, parents feeling at ease. These are all major obstacles to overcome, so let's take them one at a time. First up, long play sessions. This is contingent on a few things. First, comfort. VR screens require a high resolution to look good. Even the Switch OLED 720p screen just doesn't make sense as a VR offer but moving to a 1080 or even higher resolution handheld would be something that creates a compelling reason to make VR. 1080 resolution may not offer a top-end VR experience, but Nintendo doesn't like to play with current technology so much as to repurpose and perfect tech that is often several years old. Something akin to the original PlayStation VR seems plausible. Shinya Takahashi said that, we want to make new and surprising things, so we always keep an eye on new technology. That said, in order for us to create surprising things, we also look at older technologies to see if we can leverage them in new ways. New technologies tend to be a bit too advanced. We try to find ways to make technology more approachable. Raiding 10-year-old PlayStation technology seems exactly in Nintendo's wheelhouse when it comes to developing their virtual reality ideas. Of course, Nintendo can design their own custom headsets into which a Switch successor could comfortably slot, probably with the same comforting clicking sound that you get when you attach the Joy-Con to the core Switch system. Now, this will never be quite as good as a custom-built headset, something like the PlayStation VR 2 or Oculus Rift, but I'm sure they can leapfrog Glabo in terms of comfort and quality. But the next thing it needs is good games. And here it seems to me that many franchises have been dipping toes into a VR space. Most obviously, Metroid Prime 4 is, if it follows the pattern of its illustrious predecessors, literally a first-person experience where you wear a visor to interact with the world. I cannot possibly think of a Nintendo franchise that is a more perfect fit for VR. And in a world where VR technology does exist, it just seems like a crying shame not to try and make a virtual reality Metroid Prime. It also strikes me that this justifies the cost and the effort Nintendo has gone to in putting AAA time and money into a game franchise that historically hasn't given Nintendo an amazing return on investment. Metroid Dread wasn't the best-selling Switch game ever, but it was the perfect launch title for the Switch OLED with its rich darks. There are very few better games to illustrate the benefits of the OLED model even now. If Metroid Prime 4 similarly can serve as a proof of concept, 
for the benefits of a new system, the faith Nintendo has put in it will be explained significantly more. Now, hardware and software are developed synergistically at Nintendo. Let's go back to Shinya Takahashi. He said, We have the software team and the hardware team working very closely together. From the hardware perspective, they will sometimes come to the software group and say, We have this particular chipset that we're thinking about using in our next system. Can you take advantage of this? But sometimes the software team goes to the hardware team and says, We're working with this theme. Can you look into the technical possibilities and see if you can come up with some hardware features to accommodate it? Now, I can well imagine Retro Studios being approached in just such a way to try and build a virtual reality Metroid Prime. But one swallow does not make a summer and one game doesn't make the basis for a VR platform. But there are loads of games where VR could make an appearance. Mario Kart already has a first person mode. Animal Crossing did a weird thing in 2021 where it launched an unasked for and rather random photo mode where you could, if you wanted to, wander around in first person. Why was this added? Just a random thing to put in or have they been experimenting around with a first person mode? And then there's Pikmin 4 where the action has been moved closer to the player's viewpoint. Arms, which is already first person, and you know that stepping into the worlds of Zelda or Xenoblade with VR goggles would be a breathtaking experience, come what may. But I can completely imagine a whole raft of games that could use VR and, more particularly, AR in a Nintendo style. For one thing, a console version of Pokemon Go has long eluded Nintendo, but has to have huge potential. No, I don't expect kids to be milling around malls with goggles attached to their faces, but you'd need a camera for AR to work with goggles, and so this would also work in handheld mode. It seems plausible to me that they could build a substantial portfolio of titles that credibly use this technology, at least as many games as the 3DS had that took meaningful advantage of the 3D functionality. But Nintendo's whole thing is, how will we make them laugh? Let's throw this over to Shinya Takahashi again. Our tradition at Nintendo, and this comes from Mr. Yamuchi, is that we're not a games company, but an entertainment company. When we're making a game, the first question we always ask is, how are we going to entertain the player with what we're creating? Or, in something that's maybe a bit more of what you call a Kansai style, Kansai being the region of Japan where Kyoto is, how are we going to make them laugh? If it's just serious titles like Metroid and Zelda, that's not going to appeal to Nintendo executives looking to make the players laugh. Versions of traditional games like Blind Man's Buff, party games in the style of the Wii U, where the VR player has different information from the people looking at the television, these are the kinds of games that will appeal to Nintendo and make them think that this is a prospect for not just core gamers, but something everybody can enjoy. Remember how 1-2 Switch started out as a challenge to create a game where the players don't look at the screen? Well, what if the person wearing the headset has to describe to the other people in the room how to find and catch monsters that are invading the space? As people go around clubbing invisible monsters with the help of their VR-wearing buddy, they can earn points on the screen. And of course, Nintendo franchises like Nintendogs are absolutely ideal for virtual or augmented reality. We already saw patents suggesting some kind of AR Nintendogs was being considered. Surely the chance to interact with your virtual puppy in your real environment is a huge aspirational goal and a huge boon for parents who don't want tears before bedtime from denying their children a puppy, but nor do they want to keep a pet in their small Tokyo flat. Which brings us to our second selling point, value. There is an obvious value to having a virtual pet that can fit in your home environment. There is obvious value to a system that already has an HD screen and then retrofits it for VR functionality as well. What about research and development costs? The good news is these shouldn't be all that high given that Nintendo has already made huge strides in these areas, as Sugeru Miyamoto admitted himself. To make VR Switch work, they would be leveraging two underappreciated technologies that they must have spent a lot of time developing previously. One is the 3D technology, the 3DS, including all the efforts put into developing eye tracking tech to cut down on motion sickness. The other is the Switch's IR cameras, vital to ensure safety as people move around a 3D space. I'm not saying this tech will be mandatory, Think of 3D on the 3DS. In 2011, 3D was huge. It's hard to remember now just how massive Avatar was at the time. And I remember being told that I was some kind of strange monster for shunning 3D movies in favor of going to the 2D versions, which were both cheaper and didn't have what I found to be fairly distracting gimmicky 3D effects. Of course, the 3D bubble did in fact pop, but not before Nintendo leapt aboard with the 3DS. The metaverse has not quite caught fire, but then again, 3D films didn't quite catch fire until late 2009 when Avatar released, and by this point, 
Nintendo had to be well into development of what would become the 3DS, announced mere months later. I think Nintendo do trend spot, and I think they will jump. It's forgotten now, but the Nintendo DS in 2004 really foresaw the iPhone revolution with its touchscreen and Wi-Fi compatibility. If we think that the metaverse is really going to become a big thing in the next decade or so, it would take a big market mover like Nintendo taking something techy and alien and newfangled and strange and making it fun and toy-like to bring it to the mass market. And Nintendo will get first mover advantage, just like they did with touchscreen on DS and motion controls on Wii. How about affordability? Well, the glorious thing is that it doesn't really need any tech. You can get third-party headsets for the Switch as it stands, or build one out of cardboard if you have the Labio set. Nintendo would, I'm sure, charge silly money for their own custom headset into which the Switch would slot, but it's still a way cheaper option than the bespoke VR headset like PlayStation VR 2 or Oculus Rift, and it means that if the VR stuff flops, it's still functionally just a more powerful Switch, which loads of people want anyway. Even if they went full pelt into making a full VR visor, if the original PlayStation VR went for around $300, there's no way, years on, Nintendo couldn't match that and make great margins on a product which uses technology several years old. Virtual reality and augmented reality, extended reality or XR if you will, are not new technologies anymore, but they are primed to be made more approachable with a sprinkling of Nintendo Stardust. So. A VR system has good games, offers real value, and is affordable. Now they just need to square it with parents. Nintendo is a family company, and they want parents to feel at ease. Nevertheless, I think there are lots of things that Nintendo can do to assuage parental concerns. They already have the Nintendo Parental app, and they could integrate even more into this to allow stricter curbs on children's time. Not being able to see what your child is playing is a difficulty, after all. Many parents are concerned about what their children are doing on the online world, even when it's not strapped into their heads. But Nintendo has been patenting technologies that allow different systems to integrate with mobile phone devices. What if you could stream what your child is playing to your phone if you're concerned that he or she is being lost in their virtual world? The IR camera to allow for safety and the use of family-themed games like Nintendogs and Animal Crossing is bound to make people feel happier. So, I hope I've made a case for why VR and AR make sense, but this channel always tries to ground crazy speculation in actual forecasts of likelihood. To guide our considerations, let's hear from Nintendo's current president, Shantura Furukawa, in a quote from his investors meeting of February 2022. He said, The metaverse has captured the attention of many companies around the world, and it has great potential. When the concept of the metaverse is introduced in the media, Games like Animal Crossing New Horizons are sometimes brought up as examples. In that sense, the metaverse is of interest to us. But at this point in time, there is no easy way to define specifically what kind of surprises and enjoyments the metaverse can deliver to our customers. As a company that provides entertainment, our main emphasis is on ways to develop fresh surprises and fun to our consumers. We might consider something if we can find a way to convey a Nintendo approach to the metaverse that many people can readily understand, but we do not think that is the situation at the present time. Which sounds a bit like a hard no, but then again, this was a company that swore blind, there was no new system, and then launched a 3DS successor days later. No way would they tip their hand to the competition that in two years they planned to launch a metaverse-enabled system, even if one were planned. Let's break this down. Will the next Nintendo system support games that run some kind of VR mode within, let's say, the first three years on the market. Given that we already have this for Switch with Nintendo Labo VR, I think this is a slam dunk and I'm putting it at my highest grade, very high or 90% likely. They've tried it once and you can absolutely guarantee they're going to want to experiment again because that's what Nintendo like to do. They like to experiment and see what new technology can achieve. But will the next system promote from launch VR, AR, or XR as a core feature of the next machine, such as by packaging a headset, or even selling one separately as they did with the Pro Controller. I'd say, bearing in mind that the odds of any one option, such as VR, have to be lower than all the other possible variations that Nintendo could take their next system in, this probably can't be more than 50%, and in fact, I'm still going to put this at a low chance of 30%. If anything holds me back from being more confident, is that I'm worried that I focus so much on delving into the reasons why VR and AR make so much sense to me 
as a next step for the next Nintendo system that I'm risking losing the woods for the trees. So that's the end of my original video from 2023 and what follows are a few additional thoughts. Firstly, Japanese people in particular appear to be disposed to motion sickness and VR games can often create a sense of motion sickness. Working around these sort of problems is not unprecedented for Nintendo. They had to stare down the same concerns with stereoscopic 3D on the Nintendo 3DS. Nevertheless, I think they would sound a note of caution. Additionally, while I spend a lot of time on general safety issues around VR, there is also a body of research which suggests that virtual reality and particularly ill-fitting VR can be bad for children. This potentially could create a negative stigma that Nintendo would be very cautious about. The fact that they had to launch the 3DS with a warning that children under 7 should not be playing with stereoscopic 3D did not exactly go well for them. If they have to yet again slap massive great big warnings on the new system, it might not create a very joyous note for families on Christmas morning, although of course, warning notices around epilepsy have been carried with consoles and games for decades. This is something they could account for in their choice of games. Metroid Prime 4 would evidently suit longer play sessions, but if they had games with VR or AR modes used for short stints, for a party game on Mario Party or as one mode only in a 3D Mario game, it could be possible for this to be an additional way to play, but not something that encourages long VR sessions. I certainly feel that Nintendo have more interest and more to gain from augmented reality than virtual reality in the short term. However, it seems to me that if they develop for one, they could easily develop for both at the same time. The former is a far more social experience which fits their general approach. Shigeru Miyamoto commented to USA Today in a 2017 interview, we want families to play together and virtual reality, which requires players to be closed off from the real world, doesn't really fit well there. We also like people playing for a long time and it's hard to do that in VR. However, Pokemon Go and Mario Kart Live Home Circuit have proved excellent proofs of concept for the benefit of augmented reality. Now, Miyamoto-san's comment don't mean that they will ignore VR. They went there with Labo only a couple of years after his statements. And if the form factor of the next Switch can easily be adapted utilising a headset to play VR games, then they may feel that they should just lean into it. it. Might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Of course, the other major changes in the VR space are in the release of the Apple Vision Pro and the pause of production on the PlayStation VR 2. In the case of Apple's new system, it is clearly experimental, but appears to be doing reasonably in line with expectations at the moment. Apple being in this space is both a vote of confidence for VR, but also a guarantee that technological innovation will continue to follow, and so getting a foothold in it now may benefit Nintendo if the tech pioneered at the moment could be leveraged by them in years to come. As for Sony's offering, while I can't say I've played it, my impression is that the key flaw isn't the concept itself, but the lack of games. This is something that Nintendo probably doesn't need to worry about, as its deep venture franchises allow it the option to explore VR in many different ways. Heck, maybe they'll even do that long-awaited remake of Virtual Boy Wario Land. Now, Nintendo is developing these consoles on long timeframes. The vagaries of what Apple and Sony get up to may be of interest to people speculating, but won't be able to significantly impact the development of a console within a year or two of its launch. Another possibility that I didn't consider in my original video was the scope for this to be a separate add-on or attachment. My initial feeling was that they would want to utilise the core form factor of the new console and avoid complexity, but if they were to have a method for adding a second screen, potentially a second screen with stereoscopic 3D, it could have multiple utilities besides extended reality. I covered this a lot more in my video reflecting on the possibilities of a Switch Attach and that video is linked on the screen right now if you'd be interested in seeing more about it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time for another Nintendo Forecast.